Let us now revisit the solution concept uh, for extensive forum games. And let's start by doing it uh, Let's start by looking at the following example. In this game, uh, there are a number of Nash equilibria, and here is one of them. BH, CE. What is BH? Player one goes down here and down here, whereas player two goes down here and down here. Under this uh, strategy profile, of course, the uh, outcome of the game is this one and the payoff to both players is five. Let's first convince ourselves that this is indeed a Nash equilibrium. So let's hold players one strategy fix and see if player two can profitably deviate from their current response. Well what can they do? They can say uh, here I will instead of going C I would go D they could say that, but that wouldn't impact uh, the outcome at all, given that player two is going down B, and so that's not a profitable deviation, wouldn't change their pay, uh, payoff, the payoff to player two. And the other thing they could do is say, I'm going to go down this, this way, but that would in fact worsen their payoff, because they would end up here with a payoff of zero rather than the five they're getting. So player two cannot profitably uh, deviate from their current strategy. What, apply, what about player, uh, player uh, one? Can they profitably deviate? Well, what could they do? They could say, okay, rather than go B, I'll go A. But then they will get a payoff of three rather than the five they're getting. That's not profitable. And they could also say, I'm going to go down G over here. But given that player two is going down E, that wouldn't matter. They would, in any case, end up in this, uh, this uh, outcome with a payoff of five. And so that's not profitable deviation either. So neither player has a profitable deviation, and by definition, it's a natural equilibrium. But there's something a little disturbing about this equilibrium. Let's clear the slides, it's a little less messy. And let's again write down the strategy for player one, going B, H. And let's focus on, in D, on this node right there. Why would player uh, one actually do H? Because G dominates it. They, in G, they get a payoff of two rather than one. And so even though it did lead to a natural equilibrium, there's something a little troubling about it. And the way to understand it is by claiming that they would go down H here, player one is threatening player two and telling him, listen, do not consider going down here because I'm going to go down here, therefore, and you would get a zero, so you'd better go here and get a five, is what player one saying, is saying to player two. But this is threat is not credible because, uh, after all, player two said, player one says that, but in fact, it would not be in their interest. So I believe that player one actually would go down here. And so how do we capture this in a formal definition? That brings us to a, the notion of subgame perfect equilibria or subgame perfection. So let's first define a subgame. It's a very obvious notion. Uh, a looking at some node in the game, node H, the subgame of G rooted at H is a restricted restriction of H to, this, to the descendants from, uh, from, that, from that node. And um, similarly, uh, what are the set of all subgames of G? Well, look at all the nodes in G. And the set of all subgames uh, uh, is simply all the subgames rooted at some node in G. And so a natural equilibrium is a subgame perfect if its restriction to every subgame is also a natural equilibrium for that, that subgame. So if, for example, uh, we go to the previous slide and we consider, again, clearing the slide for a second, and if we look at the, the natural equilibrium B, H, 
CE, and we just saw it's a natural equilibrium, but among the subgames of this game, uh, the subtrees of this uh, tree, uh, this tree is this subtree. So here's a subgame. It's a game of a single player, player one, and the restriction of this uh, natural equilibrium is simply that action of going H, but this is not an equilibrium in this very simple tree because there's a profitable deviation to G for the player. And so while it's a natural equilibrium of the whole tree, its restriction to the uh, subtree uh, here is not a natural equilibrium, and therefore this natural equilibrium is not a subgame perfect. And so, so um, we see that, in fact, that captures the intuition of non-credible threat. And notice also that one special case of a subtree is the entire tree. So a subgame perfect uh, uh, equilibrium has got to also be a Nash equilibrium. So let's uh, test our understanding of this concept a little bit. Let's look at this tree and ask ourselves uh, what are some of the subgame perfect equilibria there. For example, how about AGCF? Well, the claim is this, in fact, is subgame perfect. Now, why is that? What is AGC and F? So um, that gives you this outcome over here. And uh, you can check there's no profitable deviation. But you can also ask, in all the subgames, is there a profitable deviation? Well, look, let's look at some of the subgames. Well, for example, here, uh, there is uh, this deviation over here, but that would not be profitable for player two because they would go down from uh, eight to three. How about over here? Is there a profitable deviation, for example, to player two? Not really, because uh, if they deviated over here, they would end up with a 5 rather than the 10 they're getting. How about over here? Is there a profitable deviation at this node to the agent 1? Well, no, because if they deviate, they would get 1 rather than 2. So in all subgames, the restriction of the strategy profile uh, to that subgame is still an actual equilibrium, and... Uh, uh, AGCF is in fact a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. How about BHCE? Well, the claim is that it's not. Well, let's first write down the strategy BH, BH, and CE. And this is not subgame perfect for the reasons we saw before. We saw that in this subgame right here, there is a profitable deviation for player one, namely to deviate over here and get two rather than one. And so it's not subgame perfect. And in fact, for the same reason, AHCF will not be subgame perfect. Let's write down what AHCF is. AHCF. You can check that it's a Nash equilibrium but uh, it is uh, uh, not subgame perfect. Again, this subgame here is, allows for a profitable deviation on the part of the uh, player one. So even though it's what's called off path, even though player one makes sure that he, that he never gets to visit this node by going down here, even so, it's not subgame perfect because had he gotten here, uh, he would uh, not have done what he claims he would have done. And that gives us a good sense for what a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is.